We will now call this meeting to order. Roll call. President Joe? Yes. Trustee Gilfan? Yes. Trustee McDonough? Yes. Trustee Yang? Yes. Trustee Shaw? Yes. Trustee Panos? Yes. And Trustee Valetti? Yes. We have a quorum. Now, well, right. You know, just for the record, you know, you could have said here. You know, when you oh. say yes, it sounds like you're actually voting. Oh. Um, okay. we have we have a quorum. Please now rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Are there any citizens wishing to address the board? How about me? Do I count? Yeah. You're, you're the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Cook's going to address the board. I, I, my name is Tom Cook. I'm, I live uh, on Stevenson here in Vernon Hills. And I just wanted to comment coming in. I, I know a number of these young people from over at Hawthorne and that, and uh, I was just talking to our uh, village engineer, and he was talking about how impressed he was all day meeting with them about the questions they ask and stuff, and I said, yeah, these are some of the best we got, and they're emblematic of a lot of the kids we got in town, so congratulations to all of you on being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, give yourselves a hand, huh? I thought Dan was going to go do, into a, an explanation of what a sump pump does at your house. No, we're on concrete. Oh, wasn't that? Uh, we're on concrete slides. You're okay? Yeah. So you don't need any peripheral drain tiles? Okay. Um, we, will now, we will now be starting the official's reports. Um, proclamation. A proclamation honoring the village of Vernon Hills for sponsoring students from Hawthorne Middle School North, District 73, Vernon Hills High School, District 128, Daniel Wright Middle School, District 103, and Hawthorne Middle School South, District 73, and Student Government Day, and further recognizing Village President Roger L. Byrne, Trustees Schultz, Hebda, Schwartz, Markhart, Cook, and Williams, Village Manager Kalmar, Assistant Village Manager Carey, Finance Director Nakrin, Chief of Police Fleshhauer, Public Works Director slash Village Engineer Brown, and Building Commissioner Atkin At Atkinson. Whereas the day of May 5th has been declared Student Government Day in Vernon Hills, and whereas the Village of Vernon Hills strives to provide quality educational programs and services to obtain necessary skills and knowledge for future endeavors, and whereas the Village of Vernon Hills wants to provide direct experiences to students encouraging their interest and participation in local government, and whereas the Village of Vernon Hills provides these experiences in the spirit of goodwill and to foster good citizenship. Now therefore, be it proclaimed by 2014-2015 student representatives of Hawthorne Middle School North, District 73, Vernon Hills High School, District 128, Daniel Wright Middle School, District 103, and Hawthorne Middle School South, District 73, serving in the positions of village president, village clerk, board of trustees, and department heads, recognize the village of Vernon Hills for implementing Student Government Day and express their gratitude for allowing this, their participation in this educational event. Dated this day of May 2015. We will now be going to the village manager. This is an update on the state budget related activities in Springfield. The FY15 and FY16 budget continue to be the primary issues dominating the Illinois General Assembly. Last month, the legislator felt it had resolved the $1.6 billion FY15 budget deficit by passing legislation authorizing $1.3 billion in fund sweeps and a mandated 2.25% cut in state agency appropriations to resolve this $1.6 billion deficit in the current FY15 budget. One week later, after signing the negotiated budget deal into law, Governor Rauner ordered an additional $26 million in budget cuts to the FY15 budget. These cuts have since been stored. The House and Senate are now expressing a level of trepidation among legislators as they begin the more difficult task of negotiating the FY16 budget. Governor Rauner continues to promote his turnaround agenda as part of the FY16 budget. It appears that any potential chance for a budget deal hinges upon the following. A willingness by Governor Rauner to revise portions of his turnaround agenda, the ruling by the Illinois Supreme Court as to whether or not the 2013 pension reforms are constitutional, 
and a negotiated balanced budget that includes both increasing state revenue and further reductions in state spending. Most observers don't believe a budget deal will be completed and passed by the May 31st adjournment deadline. Most believe that the 2015 legislative session will go into overtime and could last as long as mid-July. The staff will continue to monitor activities in Springfield and advise the board as required. Thank you. Are there any questions? We will now proceed to the assistant village manager. The village of Vernon Hills zoning ordinance places certain requirements on the number of parking spaces required for a particular use. For example, parking for restaurants in Vernon Hills requires one parking space per, two, per each two employees, plus enough space is equivalent to 50% of the seating capacity. Staff reviewed the requirements from Libertyville, Mundelein, Buffalo Grove, and Lincolnshire and found that they calculate the required parking for restaurants based only on the square footage of the building. These parking numbers range from 10 spaces slash 1,000 square feet to 10 spaces slash 1,000 square feet. No separate calculations are included for employees. Uncle Julio's Mexican restaurant is proposing to move to 850 Milwaukee Avenue, the northwest corner of Milwaukee and Townline, under the village's requirements. Uncle Julio's proposes to occupy 8,260 square feet. They propose 240 seats, which will require 120 spaces. Uncle Julio's proposes having 50 employees, which requires an additional 25 spaces. A total of 145 spaces are required. If the village utilizes 13 spaces slash 1,000 square feet for the proposed restaurant, the required parking would be 107 spaces. This compares to 145 spaces required by the zoning ordinance. A total of 144 packing, parking spaces exist in the current parking lot. Uncle Julio's will appear before the Planning and Zoning Commission to request a variation from the parking restriction. No action from the Village Board is needed at this time. Thank you. Are there hey, any can I interject something? How do you guys feel about valet parking? Talk nah. amongst yourselves. Anybody know what valet parking is? Um, valet parking is when you basically pay a guy to move your car to a parking spot. Right. And... Do you think that would help Uncle Julio's? Well, he's under-parked, right? As opposed yeah. to over-parked. Okay. <laughs> Are the next they... question is, do you know what a bailman is? Because that's what's created when you throw your keys at the valet. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any more? Are there? That's for your parents watching right now. Are there any more questions? Has the developer talked to Westfield about parking on their property? Westfield has not authorized Uncle Julio's to utilize parking at the mall. So what happens if people from the mall park there? They were already in shopping, and then they go into Uncle Julio's. What happens then? Uncle Julio's will have even less parking. They have what? They'll have even less parking. Well, no, no, not if they're over in, in the parking lot if it's part of Westfield. So would you guys authorize towing those cars? Um, yeah. Frankly, yeah, because... Um, the Uncle Julio's parking is kind of like exclusive to people who want to go to Uncle Julio's, but it's a mall, so people can park at like the Macy's too and then walk to the Uncle Julio's. Uh -oh. For this, we'll work with the developer at the mall. Okay. What, do you want to talk about cross easement agreements? <laughs> That's what it'll, would allow Uncle Julio's to actually park over in the mall. And they're not granting that. So that's why they, they proposed to the real village board valet parking. So they might park you like, you know, in Libertyville, but they run fast and they'll get your car and they'll get your keys to Are there okay, any more? I'm sorry. Go, you, you guys can keep going. Are there any more questions? No. We will proceed to the finance director. The state of Illinois is facing a $9 billion deficit for their fiscal year that begins July 1st. In an effort to balance the budget, Governor Rauner has proposed several changes that may affect local governments. 
The most pressing issue from a financial perspective is the proposal to cut the local government distributive fund by 50%, which provides a share of Illinois income taxes to local governments. If this proposal is successful, Vernon Hills is in danger of losing $1.25 million in revenue. The Finance Department has the following suggestions for the Board to consider to fill this gap in revenue if needed. Implement a food and beverage tax on all restaurants in Vernon Hills, which will produce approximately $800,000 in annual revenue. Implement a tax on natural gas tax usage that could produce $500,000 in annual revenue. Increase the telecommunications tax to produce $200,000 in annual revenue and reinstate the vehicle sticker program at a cost of $20 per vehicle, which is estimated to produce $800,000 annually. Thank you. Are there any questions? Well, how does the board feel about any of these tax increases to the good citizens of Vernon Hills? Do your parents like to pay taxes? Sure. You ever hear us talk about paying taxes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the spirit from the parents. So, uh, you know, in essence, uh, you know, it, these are, in some of those taxes we repealed. Did, board, did staff tell you that? No. We, we, we repealed the, the tax on natural gas how long ago? Yeah. Larry, Nacron. Yeah, okay. So anyway, yeah, I mean, I guess these, these really are obviously issues that could come before us, but with that said, so how do you guys feel about taxing food and beverage at every restaurant you go into on top of what's already charged, which is sales tax? I think that the public would be very upset with so, especially speaking from a younger kid's point of view, if you're going out to eat and you don't have a lot of money, it would not be awesome <laughs> to pay even more tax on that. <laughs> That's good. I, you know, I, yeah, I know. It, it's a tough one. So. Um, well, <laughs> I think that it could kind of make up for the property tax that isn't in Vernon Hills right now, because Vernon Hills doesn't have a pro property tax as oh, of right say now. Say that a little louder, would you please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. That's, no, we, you're absolutely right. So staff did a good job today preparing you guys with that statement. Okay. <clears throat> Are there any more questions? We will now proceed to the Director of Public Works. I would like to provide an update on the Emerald Ash Borer Investation. In 2010, there were 3,500 3, village-owned ash trees when EAB was discovered. After spring 2015, 771 ash trees will remain. We anticipate we will remove another 600 plus trees next spring. In 2016, less than 200 ash trees will remain. Some are being treated either by homeowners or the village. After spring 2015, the following will have been spent for EAB. $411,822 for the purchase of trees, $49,350 for supplies related to EAB, for example, gator bags, soil, and stump grinder replacement teeth. $345,000 for contract tree removal and tree planting, and $20,732 for tree age treatments on select golf course trees, Sullivan Row trees, and Route 60 medians. In total, there will be $826,900 spent on EAB after spring 2015 planting. Does anybody know what you know an ash borer is? Um, well, an emerald ash borer is a bug that goes inside of a tree, lays its eggs, and then cuts off the circulation to the tree in a vicious cycle. And then right. it what kills part off of the tree trees. dies first? Roots. Uh, the roots. I believe the roots. Die. Then we go higher, Dave Brown. Um, Don't you notice it at, at the top first? Oh. Yeah, the leaves start withering. <laughs> what, what's, the, what, what's the answer? So, um, yes, the, uh, yeah. the trees are noticeable by, um, by the top of the trees. It tries to re-sprout, and it doesn't look uh, natural. And we also, as uh, our mayor always says, there's always woodpeckers that are going and trying to eat the larvae, so they're pecking there. 
So when you see a lot of woodpecker marks on a tree, you may want to go look at that tree. Because that tree has ash borers. Okay. Now, how, Mayor, how do we handle like taking down ash trees on, on, on private part property? Should we do that? Um, well, in order to stop an invasive species from growing more widespread, I think we should um, try to remove as much um, emerald ash borer infected trees as possible before it starts to spread and wipe out the whole ash tree population. So you would pay public funds to go on private property to do that? No. I'll get back to you later about that. <laughs> That's a very good answer. <laughs> because we really can't spend money to do that. You know? At least I've been told that many times by corporation council, village attorney slash, and then, of course, Larry Nackard. So. Are there any more questions? I have a question. As a resident whose tree has been removed, how long can I expect until a new tree will be planted? Um, less than one year. Thank you. We will now proceed to the Chief of Police. Thank you, Your Honor. I will now be addressing the Internet Transaction Safe Zone. Last year, an elderly couple was found murdered in Marietta, Georgia, following a Craigslist deal that went horribly wrong. In the aftermath of that investigation, the Marietta, Georgia Police Department established what they have referred to as a Craigslist safe zone. As a follow-up to the news release on the Today Show, a lot of interest has been generated in establishing similar safe zones in local police departments. After all, where will you feel safer than inside a police station? We, we have had several inquiries from the community on this issue, and we are now researching the possibility of establishing the Vernon Hills Police Department as a safe zone. Given the fact that electronic forms of communication and sales go far beyond Craigslist, we are tentatively planning on calling it an Internet Transaction Safe Zone. If the board concurs, we would like to begin developing the policies and procedures necessary to establish an Internet Transaction Safe Zone within the Vernon Hills Police Station. Um. This sounds like an excellent idea. Is there a fee for using the police station, and do we have to call to make an appointment? No, there is no fee for using the service, and you will not have to make an appointment. Since the police station is open 24 hours a day, you can simply make arrangements with the buyer or seller to meet at the police station. And does a police officer need to be present when the transaction takes place? No, the police department is simply providing a safe and secure place to conduct business, especially when meeting with complete strangers. I would like to make a motion that the police department be authorized to establish an internet transaction safe zone within the police department. I second that notion. Under comments or questions? No. Any, um, you can ask the board if there's any comments or questions. Any comments or questions? Yeah. Uh, you can also <laughs> use the parking lot for a transaction. Okay? Yeah, they told so us about that. Selling cars or <laughs> you know something that's kind of big and bulky, you can also use the parking lot. So you don't have. You, of course, you can go inside the building. So roll call. President Joe here. Trustee Gilfen here. Trustee McDonough here. Trustee Yang yes. Trustee Shaw <laughs> yes. Trustee Panos? Yes. And Trustee Valetti? Yes. Motion carries. We will now proceed to the building commissioner. A new concept restaurant called Mod Pizza is proposed in River Tree Shopping Center. More specifically, the restaurant would be located within a portion of the building currently occupied by Ross Dress for Less. The building size and orientation would remain the same. However, the following changes are proposed. The canopy over the main entrance will be increased in height and the sign band on the south elevation will be clad with a metal finish material. An outdoor dining patio will also be installed on the east side of the building, and new landscaping will be installed around its perimeter. A wood pergola will be located over the patio, and a screen wall will be installed between the patio and rear access drive. A glass garage door will be installed on the east exterior wall, leading from the interior space to the outdoor dining area. New signs will be installed in accordance with village requirements. The plans attached to your packet show the existing and proposed elevations of the building. Also attached is the revised site plan showing the new outdoor dining area. 
For tonight's meeting, Mod Pizza is requesting preliminary feedback from the board prior to their public hearing. A motion directing this to the Planning and Zoning Committee to conduct a public hearing in consideration of architectural and site changes is requested. Are there any questions? Um, I noticed that on the site plan, the outdoor dining area will replace a portion of the drive aisle. Uh, will the remaining drive aisle be uh, adequate for off-street loading? Yes, the remaining drive aisle can be accessed from the north side of the parking lot, and the aisle width is adequate to serve delivery trucks. Do the new signs comply with the requirements of the sign code? Sign drawings have not been provided, but the applicant has agreed that all signs will fully comply with the sign code. Drawings will be provided as part of the public hearing before the Planning and Zoning Commission. I'd like to make a motion to refer this matter to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a public hearing to consider architectural and state plan changes. I second that motion. Roll call. President Cho? Here. Trustee Gilfan? Here. Trustee McDonough? Here. Trustee Yang? Yes. Trustee Shaw? Yes. Trustee Panos? Yes. Trustee Valetti? Yes. Motion carries. Are there, is there any new business? No new business? <laughs> Trustee Cook, you got any new business to bring up? <laughs> okay, well, who, who rides their bike in town? Does anybody on the board ride a bike? You, all, you have driver's license already? The ones that don't raise their yeah. hands? So you don't ride your bike anymore? Do you just drive around town? I yes. walk. Yes. Well, you're, the ones that don't ride your bike anymore, you're part of the problem now. It's just like us adults. With that said, every year, uh, you know, someone, probably me, uh, he mentions to Dave Brown, our public works director, that you trim trees and, and, and trees that, you know, people can hit while, you know, possibly riding a bike because limbs are hanging over. And uh, we have a pretty elaborate bike path system throughout town. And uh, we're going to, you know, continue to actually add more sidewalk slash trails all over town. And we continue to, uh, you know, actually, you know, make it connective. And uh, I don't know how many miles we have. It's probably, John, do you, where's John Calvert? How many miles do we have of bike paths? And then foliage to kind of get intrude and... I would probably say somewhere between 10 and 15 miles, potentially. And I don't know how much vegetation comes on the top. Right. It just depends on where you're riding. And, but with that said, so I'd like to bring that up and make an appeal to public works, you know, to actually make it safe for walkers, bikers, and joggers with all the foliage is now is in full bloom. So happy spring to everybody. Okay, <laughs> Mr. President. Um, motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there a motion? I, I motion that. Is there a second? I second that. Okay, there's no discussion, no questions. Roll call. Roll call. President Joe? Aye. Trustee Gilfan? Here. Trustee McDonough? Here. Trustee Yang? Yes. Trustee Shaw? Yes. Trustee Panos? Yes. And Trustee Valetti? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> this meeting is now adjourned. There you go. Well, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we will have a, a, a real board meeting after this, but uh, as usual, uh, you know, we, we will have uh, a tape for everybody. I assume everybody would like a tape of your wonderful children up here conducting village business. So, uh, you know. Your Honor, actually, the, it will be on YouTube tomorrow on our website by the end of the day. Okay. So you'll have access so you, to YouTube, and if you'd like an individual copy, let us know. Other than that, you, if you want to stay for the village board meeting, it's okay. If you want to leave, I'd understand completely. <laughs> and we will take a break for what, about 10 minutes? Because there's a cake out there for just calling my everybody name. here, right? And the parents and other than that, do you want to say anything, Mayor?
Alex, about your day here? It was extremely nice. I learned a lot, and I really enjoyed it. I also got to miss standardized texting, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anybody else? Anybody else? Why don't you guys make a comment on what you did today? It's okay. You know? You want to... Who did, who did you all sit? Why don't we start down there? Who did you sit with from the village? Um, Mr. Brown. Who was it? Mr. Brown. Okay. <laughs> right. And your name is? Ruby. Ruby. Oh. Okay, great. And who did you sit uh, You are Ma Ma Maggie, right? Yes. Who did you sit with? I sat with Miss Atkinson. Okay. Was it okay? Or? Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> and who's next to you? Austin? Oh, uh, Matthew. Matthew, okay. Who'd you say? Joe. <laughs> okay. All right. And who, next? State your name, please. Uh, I'm Spencer, and I sat with Mr. Brown. Okay, good. Next? I'm Emily. I sat with the village manager. Well, do you have any comments about him? What's his name? No, it was good. <laughs> good day. You got his name? Joe. <laughs> John. John. I know. Yeah. It's... It's about Joe. Joe. It's all about them, Your Honor. It's all about them. You identify him in a lineup, you know? Yeah, I could. Okay, who's next? Serena. All right, who would you sit with? I was also with Mr. Brown. Okay, who's next? Hmm. You want to state your name, please? I'm Rhea, and I was with the chief of the police department. Really? What's his name? You should remember this, trust me. <laughs> chief Fleshauer? Is that him over there in the corner? Oh, they're in here. No? He wasn't there. He oh, who wasn't did there he, today. Oh, uh, Rick he Davies. wasn't there today. You were with Deputy Chief Davies. Okay. Yeah. Did he give you any sage advice? I mean, good advice? Yes. About what? He said that if you're going to buy stuff online, we should always use the internet safe zone. Internet, internet transaction. Internet, internet Internet transaction safe zone. Okay. All right. Oh, that, okay. Fine. Who's, and who's next, next um, to the mayor here? I'm Marika, and I was with Mr. Kalmar. Okay. And what, what did you talk about with him? Um, well, we talked about... <laughs> School and business. Okay. Like the Emerald Ash Borers. Yeah, all right. Where do you go to school? Hawthorne 73, Middle School South. All right, well, that's good. All right, Alex. Uh, hi, I'm Alex. Um, I was with um, Village Manager Kalmar. I learned a lot, like how to say I'll get back to you soon. So that was good. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, you know, hey, sometimes you got to say that. It's a tough, tough question. All right. And, and, but, Alex, I was in the building, so didn't we channel in some way? During lunch, yeah. Yeah, we kind of, yeah, we channeled. I said a little. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And who's, your, who's the next trustee? I'm Morgan McDonough, and I was also with Joe. Okay, did you talk to Joe? Yeah, we talked about all the new things that they're building here right. and like um, like Menards and Cuneo and stuff. Okay, that, okay. That's some of it's sad, but I like new places too. Some, some things are sad? Yeah, like Cuneo. <laughs> oh, Cuneo? Yeah, well, they're not going to touch the museum or gardens. It'll, what, what is that? It's like 50 they're acres that will remain pretty much the same. No more like Joe. Okay. okay. Is that what Joe told you? Well, yeah, sure. And the library thing. I'm going to expand on the library, maybe. Yeah, the parking lot? Yeah. Okay. Have all you children, students gone to the new library? Yeah. 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 Wait, which library? Aspen. Oh, the one on Aspen. Aspen. You know, on uh, Aspen. Aspen Drive Library. Across from the junior high. It's right across from our school. Okay. Yeah. No? No. Yeah. Do uh, yeah. you live in town? Uh, I live in Lincolnshire. Yeah, okay. Well, you go to another library. That's yeah. fine. You know. <laughs> go to Vernon, right? No? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Vernon Area Public Library District. Yeah, okay. Well, that's, that's a great library, too. All right. <laughs> and next, uh, next to uh, 
Morgan is who? I'm Sujay, and I was with Mr. Atkinson. And we learned a lot about uh, the new the mall renovations and how long that took, as well as the Oaks and the GIS system. Okay. All right. And who's next? I'm Gavin, and I was with Joe. Joe had a lot of, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of students, huh? Three. And what did you talk to Gavin about with Joe? Um, the new Menards possibly coming in, and then the expansion of the library. Okay. Is that on our agenda tonight? Mm, no. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'll get Wait, back to you on that later. later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Did we pull it? Oh, we pulled it. Yeah, okay. Oh. All right. And then who's next? I'm uh, Sammy, and I was with Mr. Calmer. So what did you talk about? Um, we talked about our schools and what we were doing to help the community. Okay, and what do you like to do? Um, like we were talking about how like student council makes donations. Oh yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, and who's next to you? I'm George and I was also with um, village manager Kalmar. <laughs> What's your last name, George? George Pauletti. Okay, and what did you talk about with the manager? Um, so we talked about our interests inside and outside school, what we do for our community, and and about the the budget. Okay. <laughs> did you learn anything? I did. Okay, can you tell me one thing you learned? so awesome. I'll get back to you later. <laughs> okay, who, who's next? I'm Austin. I was with Deputy Rick. Okay. And I learned about how if you're a, a suspect for a crime, everything you say or do is, is all recorded. And it can be used against you in court. Well, after you read your rights, right? Yes. Was that true, Chief? That, that's part of his rights. He has, okay. He's got the first half. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, well, once again, I'd like to thank all the students that participated today. We certainly want to thank the parents who came here tonight. And uh, as, uh, as it was mentioned earlier, just, I guess it will all be on YouTube tomorrow, right? <laughs> All right, and uh, I know we have Mary, uh, Mary Castellucci here, Castellano, I'll stand up. Uh, why don't you say a few words? Mary, come up and say a few words about the student, about your experience. Why don't you, you know. I, I'm an outstanding student. There's a presentation altar here, you're not going to be on TV. That's why they have mics. <laughs> Come on, you're a teacher. You ought to be used to that. Okay. Um, I learned that I work with many talented, gifted students, and they are surrounded by other gifted students. I have former students here uh, that are now taking the high school, and um, I appreciate the village giving the kids the opportunity to do this. Absolutely. And it's a wonderful experience. We've been doing this for a long time. I have been, long time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, and thank you to the students and the parents, and I hope you had a great day. Okay, you're all excused. Hello. you got to pick up the pace here because the hogs are out. Is this still, is this still